Okay, so we have ChatGPT agent from OpenAI, which is basically a combination of multiple tools. So this includes operator, deep researcher, along with code execution, and some image generation tools. And this can actually help you get a lot of work done, which can be useful in real life. And we're seeing this trend that the model companies are moving towards more of products, and these products are actually becoming more and more useful. So they just had their live stream, and now there is a blog post which goes into a lot more detail. So this talks about bringing research and action together. So it's a single agentic system that is trained through reinforcement learning, and it, as I said, combines operators' ability to, to interact with websites, deep research skill in synthesizing information, and chat GPT's intelligence, and conversational fluency. So you will be able to use this new agent within ChatGPT, which is pretty great because you're using the same unified platform to use agentic capabilities. Now, there are some other products out there, Mariner from Google, which can do some of the browsing stuff, but ChatGPT takes it to another level. And talking of Google, an OpenAI release will not be complete without Google announcing something. So today, the VO3 is available through Gemini API. So you will be able to create stunning videos through VO3 on the API. Plus, image to video is coming soon. So the agent is going to live within a sandbox. It has its own computer, essentially. It has access to everything that you would expect on a computer and you can connect it to your apps through the chat GPT connectors. And that's why I think it's extremely powerful because it, it can get a real work done for you. And since it also has access to image generation capabilities, so it can really get creative. However, we'll have to see how effective this system is because I think when OpenAI announced Operator, it didn't get much traction. So we'll actually have to wait and see how people adopt these systems. But on benchmarks, it does seem to be pretty impressive. So recently, Humanity's last exam is getting a lot of traction. And it seems like every company wants to highlight this front and center. So here, OpenAI in OpenAI's fashion is comparing this new agent system with its own models. They are not including any other model providers which is, I think, disingenuous. This is a trend that I'm seeing, which is really bad because companies are completely ignoring what other competitors are doing or the type of performance they get. But anyways, so if you use deep research, uh, that was state-of-the-art with 26.6%, but now uh, agent with all the tools available can go up to 42% almost. Uh, if you recall, Grok 4 can go up to almost 52%. So still, that is probably the state of the art, but OpenAI is making huge progress here as well. Then again, they talk about Frontier Maths. It's yet another benchmark. Here, again, they have substantially improved on their 4.0 Mini. I haven't actually seen other scores around this benchmark, but it would be helpful if they put other models or providers to things uh, to, to put things in perspective. Now there are some other benchmarks on which the performance is not that substantially improved. For example, the, on the DS bench, which is designed to evaluate agents on realistic data science tasks, uh, spanning data analysis and modeling. Right, you can see that ChatGPT agent is probably about two percent better than O3. On the data modeling task, however, it's about seven to eight percent. Now, there are still tasks on which humans are much better than some of these agentic systems. So, for example, a spreadsheet bench that evaluates a model and their ability to edit spreadsheets derived from real-world scenarios. So, if you look here, ChatGPT agent is state-of-the-art with almost 46%, but humans are still at 72%, right? So, there is still some hope for us. Talking about some hope for humans, there was a competitive programming competition on which this one person did better than OpenAI. So again, there is some hope, but we'll see how long that lasts. Now let's have a quick look at some of the other benchmarks. So this is investment banking modeling tasks. Again, it's state of the art. There's another browse cam 
a benchmark that OpenAI published earlier this year that measured agents' browsing capabilities, right? And it seems that this reinforcement learning specific to the agentic task for browsing, data analysis, and then generation of reports through deep research has substantially improved this agent's capabilities. But I think it also brings some very interesting questions regarding what type of access you want to give to something like ChatGPT agent, right? Because it can take operations or actions on the web. That means it can access accounts. So do you feel comfortable giving your, let's say, private keys or passwords to an agent that is running in a remote sandbox environment, right? Similarly, there's going to be some concern around financial information, right? So I think this is a new reality that we all need to get used to and decide on an individual basis how much access you're willing to give to these systems which are running on remote servers. And OpenAI is taking a very cautious approach here. So for some of the op actions that is going to have consequences, ChatGPT agent is going to need explicit user confirmation. And there's going to be active user supervision. So you can actually see what the agent is doing. And if you if there's need, you can actually intervene and stop its actions, which is actually really good. Personally, I think you always want to have a human in the loop component. And it's really great to see that OpenAI is taking that approach. Now, in terms of availability, so the good news is that it's going to be available to Pro Plus and Teams. The bad news is that the Plus, who are probably majority of the people are going to get only 40 messages per month. Pro actually gets almost 10 times that which is pretty good. The pro users are going to get access today. They say that the plus side users are going to have access by the end of the day. We will have to see that. Now with this release, operator is going away in the next few weeks, but deep research is going to be available as a standalone feature. So you don't have to rely on a chat GPT agent for everything. If you just want to do deep research, you will be able to do that. So this is very interesting times. And we're seeing a rapid innovations in this computer usage, computer use agents, and different companies are taking different approaches. So some have browser-based agents. Now, in this case, ChatGPT agent has its own sandbox, its own bus, essentially. I have seen some agents uh, coming up very soon in future, which are going to run on your machines. And as I said before, these new capabilities also brings a lot more new concerns. So it will be interesting to see how the community evolves around it and what the usage patterns are going to look like for end users. Anyways, this was a quick update on ChatGPT agent. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. And as always, see you in the next one.